In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Greetings to you, dear friends, in the most holy name of Jesus. I would like to read to you today a little passage from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 7, verse 13. It's about the narrow way. We read like this. Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction. And those who enter it, enter by it, are many. For the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are few. The narrow gate. There is a place, uh, you, must, you must have heard the name Chirapunji. Chirapunji is in the northeast India in the state of Meghalaya. It is about um, some 40-50 kilometers from Shillong. We can go by road and reach Chirapunji. It's a place known for the highest rainfall in the whole world. And there are a number of places we can visit around Chirapunji town. And one of these is a cave, or rather a group of caves. But the most interesting cave has a very narrow entrance. You walk through the cave a little bit, and then you come to a very narrow uh, entrance to the next part of the, of the cave. And if you are ready, you can bend down, crawl across, and come to the other side of the cave to see something really very, very beautiful. If you are not ready to crawl across, then you don't go there, you miss the place. This is really like entering through the narrow gate. Many years ago, once uh, when I was working in Nagpo, a visitor had come from Ireland, if I remember. It is some 25 years ago. And that evening I was going for a little house visit to visit uh, an old man who was lying sick in his hut, in a, a hut near Sadar in Nagpur. So this gentleman said, I am also coming with you. All right, let's go. So we went to this place and uh, when we came in front of the hut, he found that the hut was so low, the roof of the hut was so low, that if you want to enter into it, then you really have to bend very much and then come into the hut. And we did that. He also came into the hut and he saw the old man lying very sick and his daughter standing nearby taking care of him. And after talking to the old man, we gave him some gift and all that, and we came out after saying a little prayer for the old man and the family. When we came out, this visitor from abroad told me something which struck me. He said, that old man has given me much more than what we have done for him. Entering into that hut, bending down, meeting him, talking to him, and then coming away after giving him some small gift, this man says, that old man has given me much more than we have given him. This is entering by the narrow gate in order to find life. Let us think about how we can enter through this narrow gate and walk along this narrow road in our life to find life at the end of it. Pope Francis, in his uh, Laudato Si, spoke about caring for the planet, the environment. That also is entering through the narrow gate and walking the narrow street to save the world from destruction. An incident took place in uh, the little village where I live. Some good school teachers, one day, 
gave a beautiful talk to the children in the classroom about the environment, about how we should not pollute our rivers and waterways and things like that. And sure enough, the next day when the children were uh, coming to school, they found on the Ryarom Bridge, a gentleman dumping something into the river, standing on the bridge and dumping something, something into the river below. The school children said, no, 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 don't do that. You are spoiling our water. They said, mind you, go away. And uh, he scolded the children and he dumped the stuff down. It was some pieces of plastic or some old seat covers of his vehicle, whatever it was. But the children did not leave him. What did they do? They rang up the police. They said, come quickly. Here is a man who is uh, dumping something, something into the river. And the police came told the man, what have you done? And finally, he had to retrieve all those things which he had thrown into the river. Slowly, people are learning to take the narrow way rather than ignore these kind of things. Many, many years ago, there was even a saying in Kerala, if you don't want a thing, they say, go and throw it in the river. Go and throw it into the river means throw it away. It is a useless thing. So whatever is useless, you can throw into the river. The river will take care of it. Unfortunately, we have that kind of a custom in uh, our country where we throw whatever is unwanted into the waterways. But that is all changing now. We are learning. And Pope Francis is adding to our instruction with Laudato Si about these things and even more. When we read the Gospels, we find that Jesus not only spoke about the narrow way, but he always chose the narrow way. There are not many takers very often for this narrow way. In chapter 6 of the Gospel of St. Luke, we have the Beatitude story, a little different from that which is there in uh, chapter 5 of St. Matthew. Now here, I like to quote to you for, from chapter 6, chapter 6, verse 20 onwards. And he lifted up his eyes, on his disciples and said, Blessed are you poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you that hunger now, for you shall be satisfied. Blessed are you that weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when men hate you, and when they exclude you and revile you and cast out your name as evil, on account of the Son of Man, rejoice in that day and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven, for so their fathers did to the prophets. And then he tells the rich, woe to you, rich, etc., the opposite of what he said now. Let us look at this uh, beatitude, the way, the way of the beatitude which Jesus proposes for all of us. Poverty is considered to be the greatest problem in the world today. The poverty of the masses. It is true. It's a pity. The world has enough and more resources for everybody and still more. But because of the greed of some or of many, the need of many are not met. And all this is surely very well known to us. But then when we look at poverty in itself, why is it that the wise men, or wise women too, of course, why is it that the wise choose the path of poverty rather than wealth? There is great wisdom there. Jesus himself chose the path of poverty. Otherwise, why should he be born in the manger of all places in that old cattle shed? Why should he live as a poor man all along? He had no money even to pay the taxes, so he had to tell St. Peter to go and cast a hook into the river or into the lake and uh, catch a fish. And in the mouth of that fish, you will find one shekel. Give it as tax, half shekel tax for you and for me. Jesus did not have money with him. He was a poor man, nowhere to lay his head, he says. 
why did he choose poverty and this uh, a life of want if that was not good which is better choosing poverty or choosing the 30 pieces of silver which judas did in place of christ judas had to make a choice either these 30 pieces of silver or christ your lord and your god and your master he chose the 30 pieces of silver and he ended up in that dreadful way do we choose 30 pieces of silver open rather than Jesus or are we willing to go through the narrow way hunger and thirst some people may never have suffered hunger and thirst and so they do not know what's the pain of being hungry it is good that sometime we experience real hunger and real thirst so that we know what it is to go hungry for so many millions of people and it is such people who have experienced this who will come forward to help the poor to save them from their misery what about sorrow Jesus says blessed are you that weep for you shall laugh sorrow also will be turned into laughter when we read the life of uh, mystics for instance the life of saints even life of mother teresa we find that these saints go through a terrible time in their life very often towards the end of their life there is real darkness darkness even of faith john of the cross calls it the dark night of faith and why they have to go through this agony this sorrow this misery because at the end of that at the end of the dark tunnel there is light they enter into the glory of the presence of God after suffering sorrow and agony then Jesus says blessed are you when men hate you and when they exclude you and revile you when they cast you out cast out your name as evil on account of the son of man he says rejoice rejoice in that day hatred rejection abandonment these are everyday stories nowadays very often we come across people who are abandoned newspapers report an old woman left in the railway station by her children the children have vanished the woman is alone in the railway station for the public to look after an old person abandoned in the hospital bed everybody else is gone no one wants to take care rejected abandoned thrown out such stories we hear very often and they are very common but to voluntarily accept this rejection this persecution and to endure it with faith in Christ that's a real challenge it's not everyone's cup of tea and uh, this is what sometimes leads to the conversion of the persecutors themselves as we can see in the case of saint paul stephen's faith stephen's endurance stephen's forgiveness stephen prayed like jesus on the cross father do not put this sin on them forgive them and paul was standing nearby when stephen was being stoned to death and I'm sure Paul never forgot this prayer of Stephen. After his conversion, Paul must have remembered this constantly in his mind. So when we endure pain, choosing to endure it for the sake of Christ, because certain amount of pain can never be, uh, say, escaped from, we cannot escape from pain in this world. But when we endure pain, looking at Jesus as our model, following the example of the saints, that becomes something very fruitful it is about said about saint dominic that uh, when he went about preaching you know preaching is a hazardous occupation very often uh, he went to toulouse to preach and the people of toulouse were so happy with saint dominic they welcomed him wholeheartedly they praised him and they said your uh, your brethren the dominicans they have come here and they have established a convent at Saint Jacques 
and uh, they are doing wonderfully well, we are very happy with you and all that. Then St. Dominic continues his travel and he went to another place called Carcassonne. And Carcassonne people did not welcome him, they started pelting stones at him almost and chasing him away, go away from here, we don't want to see your face. Later, St. Dominic says, I must go to Carcassonne rather than to Toulouse. The people of Toulouse do not need me. The people of Carcassonne need me. So I will go to Carcassonne rather than Toulouse. The choice. In spite of the fact that people had even planted some murderers on the roadside to kill St. Dominic, he walked along. He was ready to take the narrow road, the road that Jesus had pointed out. Like this, we have uh, examples from so many saints. Saint Catherine of Siena, for instance, she loved the life of prayer. She wanted to be locked up in her little room in her house, which her daddy had allowed, and um, she was praying all the time, having visions and talking to Jesus, talking to the Heavenly Father, listening. Oh, all this thing was going on very well. One day Jesus told her, Catherine, now it is time for you to open the door to go out into the world. You go out into the world to teach people to reconcile to one another, to live in peace, to take care of the sick and the needy ones. Catherine said, Lord, I will miss my life of prayer. What you are saying, go out into the whole world with so many distractions and all that. Jesus said, well, you go out into the world, but make sure that there is a little room in your heart where you constantly adore the Lord your God. And that is the cell, the interior cell, the cell of the heart. So Catherine said, that's fine. So she went out and she went to the hospital in Siena, looked for all the miserable sick people there, started looking after them, bandaging them, giving them medicines, joining the nurses and the doctors, etc. And then she inquired, are there any sick people lying in their homes? There were a lot of sick people who had no one to take care, lying miserably, struggling to survive in their homes. And she would go there and take care of them. And one such woman whom she was taking care of was really in a very bad mood. She would curse Catherine. She would tell stories about her that were totally wrong, spoiling her name. And she would, in this way, really make life of Catherine miserable. But Catherine never came back, abandoning her. She would go day after day, looking after this woman, choosing the narrow road. We have the beautiful story of Catherine, how when one beggar came to her, shivering, saying that, I need some clothes. I... Catherine had nothing at hand except the mantle that she was wearing. She cut that mantle into two, gave one piece to the beggar, the other she covered herself with. And that night, Jesus appeared to Catherine. And wearing that half mantle which Catherine had given to that poor man, to tell her that whatever you gave to this poor person, you have given it to me. We have the example of St. Martin de Porres. Of course, he is known for his love for the poor and giving himself to them. He was a man who was uh, abandoned practically by his uh, parents, both the daddy and mommy, because he was dark in color. Now only people understand dark is beautiful. And so this uh, man, Martin de Porres, he survived all these insults and abandonment and all that. And he loved Jesus. And he continued looking after the poor. People like him who were rejected and left outside. And one day, he had become a Dominican. And he was in charge of looking after the poor who come to the door. One day, a very poor, sickly old man comes in the middle of the night and knocks at the door and says, I need some place to stay. There was no place to stay. So what did Martin do? Quietly opened the door and took him to his own room put him in his bed. And next day when the superior blamed him for doing that, you have been disobedient, and because this man is a very dirty man, you brought him into the 
Martin said, charity is more important than cleanliness and obedience. And in this way, are we able to choose the narrow way? There are a lot of more things that I want to tell you. I will tell you in another talk probably about how to choose the narrow way. Jesus is offering us this challenge. Are we trying to escape different difficult things? Or are we looking at difficulties and challenges along with the spirit of Jesus to take the narrow way to save us and to save others? Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.